so this is just a string defined in the code, you know. But if we want to have this in a file, so let's see how we would do that. So for this, we can't use JS bin because we need we need like to work with an actual file. So this is the string that would be inside of a CSV file. So we need to separate the code. Like nothing else will change except for this code here. Instead of just having it as a variable here, it will actually fetch a file. So the way you fetch a file is with uh, Ajax. So Ajax means asynchronous JavaScript and XML, but really asynchronous uh, anything. Like it doesn't need to be XML. In this case, it'll be a CSV file. So like Ajax is a whole big uh, thing and has a long history. But this is this is the thing that lets web pages fetch data from somewhere else. So bef in the early days of the web you would load a web page and then that page was not able to fetch any more data it all had to be in the page but with uh, Ajax a page can fetch new data that it doesn't have and here's kind of what it looks like this is an Ajax request so in order to load a CSV file we need to have this kind of code in our page that will get the CSV file so what I'm going to do is create I'm just going to make a, a, di a, a directory to have our little project and I need to serve the file so um, I'm going to use a simple server yeah so here's here's a little node dot js script that just starts a file server on my machine. Um, I like to use this but there's many other ways you could do it. So I can start the server and it will serve that page. So I can start the server in the background so I can keep editing files. So if I have uh, an index.html page. I'm just going to copy what I have in JS. We could rename it like CSV test. So I have the page, and then inside this page, there should be some JavaScript. And then here I can paste in the JavaScript that we have. So now we have JavaScript inside the HTML page. So if I save the file and then I go to localhost 8000 and I open up the, the console, it prints out this array of objects. So now we're running our code, but we have a local HTTP server. So it's really important that it's using HTTP. like. It's not showing it here in Chrome, but if I copy this and paste it, it says HTTP colon slash slash. So that's really important because Ajax, which is how we're going to fetch the CSV file, it really only works over HTTP, you know? So if I just go to, uh, here's something, a, a mistake that a lot of people make when they start uh, using D3 for the first time is that if I just go to this file and open the file it will work for most things but it will not work for Ajax because Ajax needs to go over HTTP not the file protocol so if I open up the console I can see that like it, it'll work so our code from before worked because it's not using Ajax. But just to be aware, the file protocol will not work for Ajax. All right, so here we are in our Ajax example. So what I'm going to do is put this string. I'm going to remove all these new line characters and just have this. 
this string as a CSV file, iris.csv. So I'm using vim here to write that CSV file. And then I'm going to delete this code. And then if I open iris.csv, this is what it looks like. This is really the CSV file. So if I close everything, I can cat this file and see what's inside of it. And see, it's just a text file that has this stuff inside. So next we need to use Ajax to get um, to get that file. So in Wikipedia, here's some example code. I'm just going to copy this example code from Wikipedia and paste it into this code here. So this is fetching send ajax data.php, but we, we want to change this to iris.csv. And then xhr.response text will be the result. So rather than using alert, I'm just going to use uh, console.log. And then let's see if it works. So if I go over here to this page and I refresh the page, it worked. It fetched the CSV data from the file. You know, but if if I were using the file syntax, uh, the file protocol, this would not work. And it needs to be over HTTP. So now that we have this working, uh, we're getting this error actually. Iris CSV string is not defined. So now that we have this uh, Ajax code, I'm just going to remove some comments. So we can we can encapsulate this into a function that will get the CSV data. So we have this Ajax code that we just copied from Wikipedia, but what we want to do is make this into like our own function that will make this simpler. Um, like uh, get get Ajax or something. So function get get file. I'm call it get file just so we can use this in our code later on. So the file name will be the first argument and then the second argument will be a callback which is a function that will be called when the file is loaded. So we can take all this Ajax code and put it inside this function and just change the part that we care about like iris.csv should be file name and then rather than calling console.log, we just call the callback. And then xhr.response text is what we pass to the callback. And I'll just leave this for now. Like if an error happens, it'll like pop up a dialog and say like, oh, there's a big error. So the way that we can use this, oh, there's xhr.send. So this is a part of this function. So what we're doing is encapsulating all the complex Ajax stuff that we just copied and pasted into this function get file. So now that we now that we have that, we can just call that function get file the iris.csv and then a function with the data. So the this function here this function here is the callback function. So a callback is that's a common pattern that you see in JavaScript where like you give it a function and then it will call that function sometime later after something happened. In this case after the file loaded. And then that callback is here as an argument to this other function. And then that callback is called here after the file loads with the xhr dot response text, which is the string of the CSV file. So just to see that this works, we can say console.log data. And refresh the page and see it still works. Great. But we still have this error. Uh, iris CSV string is not defined. And that makes sense because we didn't define it. 
So I'm going to copy this code that gets the file and move it down to where our original code was. Here, parsed CSV. So what we can do is we can move this code into the callback that has access to the data after it loaded. So now we can refer to the data as iris CSV string and now all of this should work. So this is the code we had before but now, now we put it inside of this callback that gets called only after the file has been loaded. So let's see if all this works. Refresh the page and then boom we get an array of objects. One last thing is it's common with asynchronous programming for the first argument of the callback to be an error. So you can check, like if an error happened, then say like, you know, could not load file or something. And then only otherwise, you know, do whatever code was going to be done. So how can we implement this in our AJAX callback? So the callback, uh, if there's no error, then the first argument should be null. But if there is an, an error, callback with the error, which is xhr.status. So this is our complete get file ajax function. Done. Great, so this is really what this um, bar chart example is doing when it calls d3.tsv data.tsv. And type is that function that gets applied to every row. See here it's parsing the frequency into a number from a string. And then that data gets passed into this callback, which now has access to the data. So here's the D3 code that renders a bar chart. 